Hey everybody, it's Ann Beebe. Today is Thursday, March 5th, 2020. I'm Barb Hammer. So I'm going to talk about today, um, change of topic. I don't usually talk about uh, domestic politics in the U.S. and um, uh, the Democratic Party uh, primaries. I, I do watch them, keep an eye on them. It's kind of a circus. And so I was uh, talking to my friend Scott on the Church Dog 42 channel, and um, he suddenly saw Elizabeth Warren has dropped down. So he said, oh, I've got to do a video about this because he, that took him by surprise and me um, because Elizabeth Warren had made it clear that she was going to stay in the race until the end. And the assumption was that she had to take uh, support away from Bernie Sanders. So um, um, there were some interesting things uh, about that story and something funny or not so funny, depending on how you see things. But anyway, um, I saw this article about um, her explanation for dropping out. And so it says that she got something wrong about the Democratic primary race. Um, so she was, says here, I was told at the beginning of this whole undertaking that there are two lanes. And so she explains, um, so there's a progressive lane that Bernie Sanders is the incumbent for and a moderate lane that Joe Biden is incumbent for. And there's no room for anyone else in this. Um, but I kind of laughed when I saw that because <laughs> I would say, okay, if Bernie's the progressive and Joe Biden is the moderate, that makes Elizabeth Warren the Republican. Because uh, Elizabeth Warren, it's very interesting. So two of the big names for of uh, Democratic women in the party are Hillary Clinton and Elizabeth Warren. And here's a fun fact. They started out as Republicans and they were longtime Republicans. And uh, philosophically, they still are Republicans. So this is what she got wrong. She didn't realize it's the Democratic Party, but really it's the, the, the one business party. It's the business party. But anyway, I just kind of laugh where she says, so Bernie had the progressive lane and Joe Biden the moderate. So I'm going to, my joke is she's the Republican. Anyway, um, she went on to, there was more here. And um, so I guess Tulsi Gabbard is still in the race, but for some reason she doesn't, she's not, <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of strange. They never mentioned Tulsi uh, as a role model for girls or for women. And um, now Tulsi Gabbard, she claims to be anti-war, but I call her the Pentagon pinup girl for the war, their war of terror. Um, so she likes to uh, uh, pose in her uniform from her service to the country. Um, and she gets, she is actually, I would argue, she's another Republican in the Democratic Party. Now you'll, there be a, there are a lot of fake leftists that claim that Tulsi is progressive and anti-war and all this. She's not at all. She's a cold warrior. She's voted for sanctions against Russia. Um, she supports the uh, Hong Kong terrorists that have the, uh, that are uh, supported by um, regime change NGOs. Anyway, so, uh, so I would argue Tulsi is another Republican in the Democratic Party. Actually, they're all Republicans basically, except maybe Bernie. Um, so Elizabeth Warren uh, and Hillary Clinton have always been uh, trotted out as role models for girls and women. And uh, I, that surprised me. I didn't know that until 2016. And people were, there were some young women saying, oh, yeah, when I was growing up, uh, they were always citing Hillary Clinton as a role model. That really surprised me. 
So anyway, um, Elizabeth Warren says here, one of the hardest parts of this was thinking about all the pinky promises she made with little girls on the campaign trail who are going to have to wait four more years. That's going to be hard. <laughs> so anyway, um, so she really, she feels like she's let little girls down. But you know what? I would argue um, that the DNC had, has the little girls covered. And uh, specifically, Joe Biden has the back of little girls, literally. Times when he gently rearranges a young girl's hair and whispers in her ear, then rearranges some more. There's nothing pervy here. The VP knows he's on camera at these swearing-in ceremonies, and the parents are right there as he leans in for a kiss. <laughs> VP is known as a close talker. Okay, yeah, so Joe Biden. Don't worry, little girls. Joe Biden's got your back, literally. And uh, it reminded me, I, I, uh, when I was talking to Scott, <laughs> until I laughed, I said, you know, you know what Joe Biden's... Um, campaign song should be or campaign theme <laughs> here it is here it is here it is Seth, thank heaven for little girls yeah. <laughs> thank heaven for little girls so that's Marie Chevalier and I hope I'm not going to get into any um, copyright have any copyright strikes just for those few seconds but who knows yeah so thank heaven for little girls that should be Joe Biden's campaign theme. Uh, so more about Joe Biden. So anyway, um, perhaps on a more serious note, uh, people have been noticing Joe Biden, he has a lot of problems when he's talking, don't we all? Um, but he, uh, it's not just his behavior. Uh, he seems to show poor judgment and problems in talking and memory and remembering where he is. And even uh, Trump has <laughs> Trump has made jokes about this. He calls him Sleepy Joe uh, for his memory problems. So Joe, um, they try to the media. Wait a minute, that's not it. The media tries to make excuses for Joe Biden's um, uh, gaffes, shall we say? Um, but it's more than gaffes. He has memory problems. So they claim that it's because of his lifelong struggle with a stuttering problem. And he, he will talk about how he overcame stuttering uh, as a boy. Um, so that's how they try to uh, cover uh, for Joe and his memory problems and uh, speech problems and gaffes. Um, but there's something more serious uh than the stuttering so uh somebody i forget where someone was saying oh did you know that joe biden joe biden had two aneurysms back in 1988 so he had had to drop out of the uh uh democratic primaries in 1988 for president and uh so he'd been caught plagiarizing and i don't uh, i don't know if there were other things but anyway that he had to there was he was under a lot of pressure and this is a local, this is a Delaware, he's from Delaware. So this is a Delaware um, article, article from a Delaware uh, news outlet. Um, so he was talking about, um, he, he actually passed out in a hotel room. And he, he, yeah, he was having, yeah, so this is when February of 1988, he suffered two life-threatening brain aneurysms. Um, so he, he actually passed out in a hotel room, um, after he'd given a speech and, uh, he flew back to Wilmington, Delaware, and they, um, the results of a spinal tap, uh, showed blood in his spinal fluid, meaning that, um, an artery in his brain was leaking. Uh, so there was a CT scan and it showed an aneurysm lying below the base of his brain. Um, so he had a 50-50 chance of surviving. This is just surviving. And actually the other media reports, um, so that was just for surviving. So he had less than a 50% chance 
chance of of recovering normally from this. So he had to have, yeah, he had a microsurgical craniotomy. Uh, and then let's see, he had to have a second surgical procedure. Mm. Uh, yeah, down here. Okay. So uh, later in May of 1988, he had a, a second surgery, um, which was supposedly successful. And he did have some, um, um, his right eyelid drooped and the right side of his forehead was immobile, but, um, he did uh, that, those uh, symptoms went away. So he had kind of like a dead face. And, um, but doctors didn't really know if that was gonna be permanent. But this is very serious, these aneurysms. Um, uh, yeah, so there are uh, other articles where it, it did not sound good that the, the chances were very, were not good for him uh, coming out of this uh, with normal cognitive uh, function. But anyway, he did go on and he was fine. But um, there are some people saying that he has dementia. Well, um, yeah, it could be. There are a lot of different causes for dementia. So my mother actually had dementia and it was probably from Alzheimer's. So the most common I guess the most common cause of dementia is Alzheimer's, but there are others. Uh, so people who have had strokes, um, they're more prone to um, have dementia later in life. Um, um, and I think there are there are other conditions, and uh, it, possibly an aneurysms could uh, cause that later in life. So I think they're called uh, I think that's sort of vascular dementia or something like that. Anyway, so um, <laughs> it's bizarre, you know, Hillary Clinton, if you remember 2016, Hillary Clinton had some very serious um, health problems. So she was seen collapsing at least once. Um, and it was speculated that maybe she had some sort of Parkinson's or something, but there was something definitely wrong with Hillary. Um, but once again, this in, uh, <laughs> The DNC, in their infinite wisdom, they always come up with a deeply flawed candidate, and that is Joe Biden. So I'm going to I'm starting to call Joe Biden the presumptive nominee because there's no way the DNC is going to let Bernie Sanders be the nominee, even though he would be the most popular candidate. Um, so Joe Biden. So here they they're trotting out Joe Biden and Joe Biden. Um, so he did very badly. Uh, in the early, in the Iowa caucuses and uh, the early primaries. And then miraculously, he does great in the uh, Super Tuesday primaries. And um, I think there was a lot of, I think there were a lot of problems with those primaries. You know, uh, typical, this is what happened 2016. They're doing exact same thing again. Um, so a lot of voter suppression and irregularities. And there were power outages, I think, at some polling places in California, the typical, typical shenanigans that we saw in 2016. So, you know, they were always claiming, oh, Joe Biden, uh, I think last year they were claiming Joe Biden's way ahead in the polls. Yeah, he's the most popular candidate. And nobody believes that. And it kind of showed the early, the, the Iowa caucuses, the early primaries. No, he did very poorly. And then suddenly, miraculously, he's doing well in uh, Super Tuesday primaries. Anyway, so, you know, you can look at, I don't know, it's uh, Democratic primaries are funny and very sad at the same time. So you just have to laugh. So my little joke is that Joe Biden's uh, campaign song should be Thank Heaven for Little Girls. And uh, so little girls, don't you worry, the DNC and Joe Biden have your back. Yes, indeed. They have your back. Okay. That's all I have to say for now. So uh, thanks for listening. And I'll get back to other topics of geopolitics. But I just wanted to put in my two cents worth about uh, the Democratic primaries and Joe Biden. 
and Elizabeth Warren dropping out. Okay, thanks for listening. And I will talk to you again soon. Bye.